Howdy folks and welcome back to my World of Tanks replays with the mighty jingles. Well after suffering through the Churchill Mark 7 we finally unlock this thing, the Black Prince. Uh, the Russian, no it's not Russian, it's British, what am I talking about? <laughs> the British Tier 7 heavy tank, the Black Prince and by god this thing's a heavy tank. So we'll jump straight into the stats. Um, 1450 hit points. Now its predecessor, the Mark 7 Churchill at Tier 6, only had 880 hit points, which was a good chunk of health for a tier 6 heavy, but you get a tier 7 and holy cow, look at that, 1450, in fact, you know what, let's compare this, where's the tiger, yeah, same amount of health as the tiger, that's impressive, what are the tier 7 heavies do I have, uh, da -da -da. I've sold the AMX M4, where's my T29, 1250 health, hmm, what about the IS? Oh no, I sold it to make space in the garage for other British tanks. Oh well, never mind. It has a good solid chunk of health, and that's very, very welcome. Because one of the problems that you had with the Churchill Mark 7 was that with 880 health, and you're getting these 122mm Russian guns shooting back at you, they only have to penetrate, if they get lucky damage rolls, they only have to penetrate you twice to kill you. Most of them only have to penetrate you three times to kill you, even with an average damage roll, and then you're just a smoking wreck. With the Black Prince, 1450 health, you can at least start taking some hits. It, it does have a lot of health, and that's a very, very welcome thing after the Mark 7 Churchill. However, it's not all sunshine and roses. Um, it's a heavy tank, 50.71 tonnes, with a 600 horsepower engine. So, yeah, we've got that lousy power to weight ratio again. Its top speed is 20 kilometres per hour. Now here's the thing, it says here that its traverse speed is 20 degrees, I don't believe that, I think that's a typo, or oh, they've given the tank the wrong traverse speed, because in practice it turns a lot faster than 20 degrees. I was struck by how manoeuvrable this thing was, and um, yeah, more on that later, and when you watch the replays you'll see what I'm talking about, I don't believe that 20 degree traverse for a second, I, I believe the tank is actually better than that. Now, armour, it's a very heavily armoured tank. It's 152 millimeters at the front, turret and hull. It's 95 millimeters at the side, turret and hull. It's 95 at the rear, turret, uh, 25 hull. So it is actually less well armored than the Churchill Mark 7, which has 50 at the rear of the hull. And it's a tier higher, so the relative thickness of the armor has actually gone down because it's a tier 7 tank the same armour as the tier 6 tank. Bigger guns are shooting at the tier 7 tank. But it is still, even though, you know, tier for tier, it's not as well armoured at tier 7 as the Churchill Mark 7 is at tier 6, it's still well armoured. You know, that's still good armour. Um, and the turret, uh, well, 30 degrees is alright. Yeah, nothing really wrong with that. 30 degree turret traverse is okay. Good view range, 370 metres. Uh, average signal range again. I know it is about the British radios, they're not that good, which is kind of weird. But anyway, yeah, there you go. Now, uh, the gun. Now, much as the Churchill Mark 1, the Churchill Mark 7, were all about great big slow lumbering tanks with, uh, well, fast firing, accurate, quick aiming, medium tank guns. It's the same deal with the Black Prince. The gun is at least better on the Black Prince than the 75mm gun was on the Mark 7 Churchill. But it's not a great gun. It's the 17 pounder. And choice of guns is pretty much uh, a couple of the Mark 7 Churchill guns. And then this is the new one, 17 pounder. It's a 76mm 17 pounder gun Mark 7. It's still got a good rate of fire. 12 rounds per minute. The penetration is getting better. Uh, 171 millimeters of penetration, uh, which you know is is in the ballpark of uh, tier seven heavy tank uh, gun penetration. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's it's good enough penetration for a tier seven heavy. The damage really really lets it down. 150 damage. It's it's medium tank gun time again. 
Uh, 150 damage. Oh, it's it's, it's going to be painful. But it is more accurate. 0.34 versus the 0.36 accuracy of the 75mm gun on the Churchill. And it's got the same 2.3 second aiming time, which isn't bad. It's just the damage output. And this seems to be the curse of the mid-tier British heavy tanks. Crappy damage output. Uh, and, you know, the Black Prince is no different. Um, so, yeah, uh, the gun. Uh, this is going to be a stock gun on the Carnarvon as well. So, you better get used to it. At least for the meantime. Um, how does the thing play? Well, yeah, I don't know. It's um, it's interesting. Um, it, it's still got that medium tank gun on a heavy, very heavy tank uh, feel to it. But it doesn't really have the same problems uh, with penetration as the Churchill Mark 7 does. It, it can, because you're coming up against uh, some tanks that have some, you know, very, very good, very well-sloped armour, and your gun has 171 millimetres penetration. But you're not at any special disadvantage with that amount of penetration. The IS's gun has 175 millimetres of penetration, and the IS manages to do okay. Um, it, but when the IS shoots and penetrates, you does 400 damage. <laughs> you do less than half of that. But you fire faster than the IS does. So are we back in the same sort of Churchill Mark 7 territory, where with that gun you need to get around the sides and rear of the enemy tanks to successfully be able to do damage, but you can only do 20 kilometers per hour, so good luck, you know, good luck achieving that. Well, yes and no. Um, it's it's kind of hard to put into words, but I have had fun driving the Black Prince. I didn't have fun for a second driving the Mark 7 Churchill. Um, even in the games where I was doing well, I hated every minute in the Churchill. I have had fun and, had, and done reasonably well and had fun doing it in the Black Prince. Um, even the games where I wasn't doing well, I was still sort of having fun in the Black Prince. And I, I'm kind of at a loss to explain why. I, I really don't get it. But I don't... I mean, I do have bad things to say about the tank, because it's, it's not that good. But I have had fun. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's really what it all boils down to. It's not... I mean, you know... For for a lot of people, the amount of fun that you have is measured by how well they do, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's that's perfectly normal. Um, I can have fun in machines that I don't do very well in because they're not very well. Uh, I'm just that kind of person. Um, you look at my T25 slash two. I've done amazingly well in that tank. Hated every minute of it. <laughs> I'm just weird like that. So you know, take my recommendations with a pinch of salt because I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I have fun in crap tanks. Um, yeah, well, anyway, I'll show you what I mean. Let's watch some replays. Well, here it is. First game in the Black Prince. Uh, tier 7 Heavy Tank. Tier 7 Maximum Game. Um, there's a lot of Tier 7s in this game. Not that many. Two Tier 6s in our team. Everybody else Tier 5. All Tier 4 artillery. Um, they've got bigger artillery in SU-8. Um, they don't have any Tier 4s. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, roughly balanced teams. It's fine. And in this game... I just, I mean, I wasn't planning, I, I, I was feeling aggressive, put it this way. I, I, I just finished the horrible experience of driving the Churchill Mark 7. And I transferred the crew into this tank, retrained them, hit the battle button, and I was just, I was just in the mood to hurt somebody. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm playing this very, very, well, not initially, but I'm playing this aggressively. External camera view here because the action gets very close and I want you to be able to see what's going on around the tank. Okay, this is where the trouble is. This is exactly what I'm looking for. There's all sorts of problems here. Um, so I'm driving right into the thick of the action. There's tanks getting blown up and killed around me all over the place. Now there's four of these buggers here. At least, you know, four that I know of. And we haven't taken... Nobody's even shot at us yet, but here it comes. And there's a bounce. 
going to take a couple of kids in quick succession here. And there they go. Aiming for weak spots. One penetrating hit. Another bounce. Another penetrating hit. And we're public enemy number one. That's artillery just blowing our tracks off from a near miss. These guys are bouncing again. So I decided, screw this, I need to get out of here. I'm not going to sit around and wait for artillery to hit me again, but they do. And I go chasing after the Black Prince. His engine's on fire. Back at the turret. Back. Yeah, he burns to death. Okay, so that we could have done without getting hit by that artillery. And there goes a chaffy. Can we reload in time to finish him before he gets into cover? Yes, we can. the shot at that uh, Panther N10. It actually hit the uh, support and balustrade of the, of the colonnade there instead of him. And the SU-152 finishes him off. So, so my basic tactic here was just to find the biggest fight and throw myself into it. I, I, I wasn't really interested in playing tactically. I just wanted to find... I was just feeling aggressive. After playing the Mark 7 Churchill, I just wanted to hurt something. <laughs> the Churchill leaves you in that kind of mood. And there we go, IS, DB, KV-1S, these guys will do. I'm just going to throw myself into this lot. I did spot something over there. I think it was... I'm not sure. Oh, the KV-1S gets a shot into me. And I think... I'll pause it here. I think that KV-1S is shot went right through the gap in the armour here because it definitely hit the side at the front and I don't see any penetration hole so I think that's that's a weak spot there I think that's exactly where it went through and right after I finish off the KV-1S and that appeared to come from behind me um, it was a T25-2 um, wherever he was, I don't know where he was but it, it it seemed to come from behind and go into the back of my turret. I could be wrong. Um, and I, I thought I'd seen somebody over here. Uh, there was something popped up on the map and then disappeared. Uh, which is why I was turning my turret around to face that way as I was coming up this road. But clearly, as soon as I came around this corner and the KV-1S spotted me, that lit me up for the T25-2. And he just took his time and finished me off. So, uh, that was, um, it was encouraging. But, again, you know, we're top tier, and the Mark 7 Churchill doesn't have problems bullying everything around it when it's top tier. So, well, there you go. My very first game in the Black Prince. And um, it's probably turned out the way most of the rest of my games are going to go in the Black Prince. Because I don't have a warm, fuzzy feeling about this tank. Uh, so, yeah, a defeat. However, we did pretty well. But, yeah, okay, we were the biggest tank on the team. Um, but... Even so, everybody else who was lower tier than us gets an experience bonus for fighting against tier 8s. I don't get an experience bonus for fighting against, sorry, not tier 8s, tier 7s. I don't get an experience bonus for fighting against tier 7s because I am tier 7. And I still got almost twice the XP of the next closest. So, basically, uh, this team were absolutely useless. Uh, the enemy team had two good players. Uh, a couple of average players and a whole bunch of Muppets or people who were just having very bad games on the day. And despite the fact that I didn't get the XP bonus for being on the winning team, I still got more experience than more than half of the enemy winning team. So, yeah. Yay me. <laughs> 18 shots fired, 16 direct hits, 15 penetrations. And with a gun that only does 150 damage, you really need to get a lot of penetrating hits in this thing to make a difference, to even make your presence felt. We took 12 hits. Now, you can take 12 hits in this sort of game, Tier 7 maximum game. You can take 12 hits in the Black Prince. You can't in the Churchill Mark 7, because the Churchill Mark 7 only has 808 health. The Black Prince almost has double the health of the tank preceding it. 1450. That's a butt-ton of health. Um, 
and it's what enables this thing to survive long enough to make its presence felt because it needs to survive a long time doing 150 damage per shot in order for anybody to even notice it's there and this was my very next game uh, Malinovka and uh, it's tier 8 I actually crashed on loading and I had to alt F4 out of the game and come back in with you can see the team already heading off which kind of relegated me to base defence although with the tank as slow as the Black Prince 20 km per hour top speed you get a map like Malinovka you're probably going to do base defence anyway because you're just too slow to go anywhere and this is where your problems are going to start in a tank like the Black Prince because yeah, I mean you do have good armor, but that gun just just isn't quite good enough in a tier eight game. Now I'm surprised to see, well, <laughs> I say I'm surprised to see a Tiger 2 sitting here. I, I'm not surprised at all. Um, he should be going up the hill with everyone else, leaving the slow tanks to defend the base like the Super Versions and the Black Princes. Uh, but no, uh, now there's a Carnarvon over there. I, I can penetrate a Carnarvon with this gun. Should be able to put holes in the side of an IS-6 with this gun, but it is 500 metres away. And the penetration isn't fantastic to begin with. We didn't even scratch and you're going to hear that a lot. Hit. You're not going to hear that a lot when you're driving a Black Prince in anything that isn't a Tier 6 game. Er, uh, sorry, Tier 7 game. Tier 8 and 9 games, you're going you're gonna to have issues. Same issues the Churchill Mark 7 has, because it's... It's, it's comparable we performance. Come on. Ah, Pershing. Right, something I can actually hurt. You know, not a lot. 150 average damage on this gun is... It's its a crime on a heavy tank. But that's your price you pay for such a rapid firing gun. Well, I can at least rest confident in the fact that none of them know where I am. Um, they would be shooting at me if they if they knew I was here. Because I have no hard cover, just this bush. And yeah, we are losing 5-1, you're not imagining things. The entire team, other than the three of us down here, went up the hill and they all died up there. that Persian just as I broke cover and he's suiciding but here comes trouble and I just cannot hit or penetrate oh I tell a lie I did penetrate now he's closing to 350 meters and then he engages his Klingon cloaking device so I need to get back into cover but I've probably been spotted, even though nobody's actually shot at me yet. Oh, there it goes. That'll be the Carnarvon. Yeah, 269 damage. That'll be the Carnarvon. And now the Tiger's taken a beating, and I've angled against the Carnarvon, and he's starting to bounce off me, which is reassuring. That one didn't bounce. And I don't know what it was. It may have been the... 
it's the Carnarvon. They're shooting into my tracks. Uh, kind of bizarre because I'm not seeing the the damage decals on the tracks. And I can't go down there to face off against that IS-3 and expose my flank against a Ferdinand and a Carnarvon. I'm just going to have to do what damage I can to what tanks I can and wait for the IS-3 to come for me. IS-3's got problems with... well he doesn't have problems but he's dealing with the Tiger 2. And the Tiger 2 obviously is performing as well as you'd expect of a tier 8 heavy tank in a tier 8 game and decided to stop and cap the base. The Ferdinand takes care of our super purging and there's the Tiger 2 on 1% health. And I can't, uh, I'm not going to penetrate the turret of an IS-3. If I move forward, that Carnarvon will have me. And the reason I'm not getting shot at now is because the IS-3 doesn't have a line of sight to me. So I've not been illuminated. But that means I can't help the Tiger 2. And he's dead anyway. Perhaps I should have gone forward and tried to come out on the flank of that IS-3. I might have been able to survive long enough to get there. And here we go. I've got all the time in the world to aim here. All the time in the world. Doesn't matter. Can't penetrate the front of an IS-3 with this gun. You just can't do it. And as you can see, that BL-9 gun, even angled, has no problems getting through the front of me. And it's just bounce, 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 bounce. And then the cadaver finishes me off. Although, to be fair, we did bounce a shot or two from that VL9 gun on the IS-3. Now, what's this? Tiger, P we're being capped. It's obvious we're being capped. Tiger P and a KV-2. Right, we've got a T-32. KV-5 can do 40 kilometers an hour coming down a hill. IS-3 is not a slow tank. And the only ones that respond to this threat the Tiger P, who was coming back to deal with it anyway, and a KV-2, who's a tier 6 heavy, and he's on 50% health, and he's not the fastest tank in the world. Now the Cadarvan's coming over to help cap it and the IS-3 finishes off the Tiger P. So well played, the Tiger P tried and the KV-2 fires a long range shot there. That's got to be a 600 meter shot and does hit and damage the IS-3. But now there's two of them in the cap circle. And meanwhile, these clowns are derping around trying to farm kills on the two survivors over here. Or oh, three survivors over here. I don't know where the third one is. And look at the counter. So, yeah. Team was utterly useless. Um, and, and we were utterly useless as well. Um, look at how ineffectual we were in this game. That gun, at long range, has trouble penetrating anything. Um, and at short range, good luck getting through the front of an IS-3's armour. And it's only one tier above us. And there we go, they've captured. Okay, um... How many times have you seen this happen? Those are the only two survivors on the enemy team. They survived because they sat in the cap circle with nobody doing anything about it. We outnumbered them two to one. And we still lost because these guys are utter retards. This poor sod here in the KV-2 and, and this fellow here in the Tiger P were the only ones who tried to go back and do something about the cap being reset. And it's not like they didn't have any warning of it. That IS-3 was encroaching on the cap the entire, well, the entire last four, four or five minutes of the game. 
you'd think when the Black Prince died and there was nobody left alive defending the base that um, somebody might have noticed. And to be fair, the Tiger P did notice and try to do something about it, but he was on low health when he came back. Uh, Carnarvon and an IS-3 are going to rip a Tiger P up. The KV-2 didn't stand a damn chance. Not with his armour. No way. And, and he shouldn't have been the only one to come back and reset the cap in the first place. He's a KV-2, for Christ's sake. He's a, he's a Tier 6 heavy in a Tier 8 game. While these Muppets were derping around, farming kills. Look, they, all, they all think they're good players because they've got kills. You're not. You're fucking retards. You let them win. Enjoy your shit XP for your loss. Anyway, now I've got that off my chest. It just winds me up. I've been in so many games where an easy win has turned into a stupid defeat because of fucking idiots like this four. But anyway, got to get into my happy place. Got to do my happy dance. Get calm. Yeah, that was shit. 40 shots fired. 40 shots fired. God almighty. 26 of them actually hit. And of the 26 that hit, 16 did damage. 16 damaging hits in a tier 7 heavy tank and we did less than 2,000 damage. That is pathetic. We took 12 hits. It's got good armour. No doubt about it. Um, it's got good armour at 350 to 400 metre range. <laughs> the gun shooting back at us had problems penetrating because we were so far away. But tier 8 heavy tanks don't have a problem penetrating you when you're up close and personal. Because, yeah, you've got 152 millimetres of armour, but it's this big box. It's like a tiger. You have to angle the thing, and you can't angle it against two different tanks shooting at you from two different directions. So, yeah, once they closed the distance, I couldn't penetrate him. Didn't matter where I pointed the gun at the front of that IS-3. Lower glacis, it bounced. Left cheek, it bounced. Right cheek, it bounced. Sloped armour normalisation, patch in patch 8. IS-3 suddenly became, I mean, it was a tough tank already. It's become very, very tough in patch 8. And a gun with... 171 millimetres of penetration has severe problems, even at point blank range, against an IS-3. So, yeah, the Black Prince. Um, I, I don't see what else we could have done in that game. Um, my game actually crashed, it wouldn't load up, and I had to Alt F4, quit the desktop, quickly reboot the game, and obviously the game was already underway by the time I, I started. And this thing can only do 20 kph. And we were on Malinovka, so I was pretty much relegated to base defence. As a bottom tier tank in the game, anyway, yeah, that's probably what, have, what I would have ended up doing with the tank with only just 20 kph. But situation was taken out of my hands, and, and I ended up sitting behind a bush, taking pot shots at tanks 350 metres away for most of it. Really, really boring. And then, of course, that IS-3 closed in, and <laughs> I was completely screwed. Well, that is just... Crap, look at that. 40 shots fired, 26 hits, 16 penetrations. It's just... Oh, it's awful. Awful. What is that gun doing on a Tier 7 heavy tank? It's just... Oh. But anyway, onwards and upwards. I'm, I'm not going to let this thing go until I get a good game in it. Right. Uh, tier 9 game this time. Um, that 152 millimetres of armour isn't looking so good all of a sudden. More importantly, neither's the gun. But, yeah, look at that traverse. 20 degrees per second? I don't think so. I really don't think so. And one thing I do notice, at the least in the Black Prince, is that other tanks have a listed traverse speed of, I don't know, say 30 degrees per second. Or, or, or whatever. But when they're moving at full speed, the performance of the suspension slacks off. It can't quite reach that maximum traverse, and I think that this is one thing that I've noticed, particularly on the Black Prince, is that it, it gets the full suspension traverse no matter what speed it's travelling at, which is good because, you know, it does only do 20 kph. But anyway, um, Street Fight, Tier 9 Street Fight on Ruinberg. Well, the good news is, you don't have to go very far to get into the action, because you only do 20 kph. And your armour is still pretty good, but it ain't going to stand up to things like SU-12254s or Object 704 shooting back at you. But check this out. That's a Mark 7 Centurion, Tier 9 medium tank, just sitting in the middle of a road junction. Well, I'll take advantage of that. Shooting at his side. Can't miss. Oh, he's pointing his gun at me. And he 
just appears to miss. And he's dead, so that was a bit of free experience. Not going to complain about that. Now, what you're going to see next is a perfect example of why it's very, very difficult to judge the way a tank's armor performs on the test server. So I just completely missed that IS-6, and as I back up, I take a hit. Okay, pause it there. Now, as I was backing up down that road, I was angled laterally from whatever was shooting back at me at 30 degrees. He hit me right on the single strongest part of my armour. Um, <coughs> this upper glacis, if you like, here, it slowed back at something like an 80 degree angle, 75, 80 degree angle. I turned 30 degrees on from return fire, it's angled back at 80 degrees and it's 152 millimetres thick. No gun in the game should be able to penetrate that. And yet, there you go. It's gold ammo. No question about it. That's the Conqueror probably using gold ammo. There is absolutely no way a Conqueror's gun should have been able to penetrate where he hit there. And yet he did. And, you know, that's life on the test server, I'm afraid. However, have a look at the map. Look at the trouble coming in over there. Because absolutely nobody, of course, went up the field here. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. So I decide, alright, let's go back and deal with the threat, but then IS-6 coming around behind me, and I can't have that because he will catch me, and he will just put shot after shot into my big fat arse. So I'm going to go and block the IS-6, and hope that our heavies and tank destroyers can deal with the threat that's coming in on the base. Of course, they can't. Okay, he gets one shot into my side as I come around the corner. That's 300 damage. Now, I've been in this situation before, in the Churchill Mark 7, and I just could not penetrate the front of an IS-6. And I have the same armour as the Churchill Mark 4, uh, Mark 7 from the front. And while half of my shots aren't going through, and I do have to aim for weak spots, at least with this gun I can't penetrate those weak spots. And he's having just as many problems penetrating me from the front, which shouldn't be any surprise because that other uh, IS-6 in the Himmelsdorf game in the Churchill, and he had just as many problems getting through me. And it wasn't until I got outflanked in the Mark 7 that I got killed, but yeah, here comes trouble. And look at the score, We're losing 4-9, 4-10. And there is no way this armour, even angled, is going to stop a shot from the SU-12254's 122mm gun. Well, uh, yet another team of utter fucking retards. There's been a lot of that about today. Uh, if they haven't all been killing each other, they've just been completely useless. Um, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Lowest tier tank on the team. Uh, runs away with almost the most experience. Yep, well done, you lot. About as much use as a fucking chocolate fire guard. The lot of you. Absolutely hopeless. This guy in the Conqueror did well. Uh, this guy in the T25 AT did well. That Centurion Mark 7, he had a good game. The T50 2 played a blinder. Well done. Unfortunately, this lot couldn't tell the difference between their arse and their elbow. Top tip you don't sit on your elbow. But enough about the team. How did we do? Well, yeah, it was alright, I suppose. I mean, it could have been worse, but there's only so much you can do with that gun. Fired 18 shots. I mean, we had a bit of a gift there shooting at that Centurion who, who, who got tracked in the middle of an open road with the side onto us. That was just free experience. So, 18 shots fired, 14 hits, 10 of which penetrated. But again, um, that IS 6, I mean, we had to aim for weak spots at point blank range in a tier 7 heavy tank shooting at a tier 8 heavy tank at point blank nose to nose range we had to aim for weak spots <laughs> oh this gun is awful it is just appallingly bad um, there's, there's nothing you can do about it I'm afraid you are stuck with that 
piece of shit 17 pounder and you know what it's it's a bloody travesty that 17 pounder was a bloody good gun in real life um i mean that's the gun or, or a variation of the gun that turned the sherman firefly into a tiger killer it held the sherman firefly killed tiger twos good luck killing a tiger two with that gun in this game um I mean, you can, if he's AFK, and you get around his side, and you can sit still for a minute and a half, pumping shots into him. You'll kill a Tiger too with that gun. Uh, it's it's a travesty. It's a it's a travesty of history. It really is. That that should be a devastatingly good gun. Instead, it is monumentally shit. The only good things going for it are the accuracy and the rate of fire. Again, you know, tier 7 heavy tank with a 76mm medium tank gun. What is going on with the British heavies? Hopefully, and I've heard that it will, the pain will end when you get to the Carnarvon. Because the Carnarvon gets an 83mm gun. Um, the 20 pounder, which still isn't really a heavy tank gun. Um, look at the damage. I mean, the penetration is starting to kind of get there. But the damage output... And the rate of fire isn't that good. Oh, but anyway, this isn't a Carnarvon review. This is us chewing our keyboard with frustration while trying to play the Black Prince. Next up, Tier 7 again. Uh, encounter battle on Ensk. And I, I have been reasonably lucky with the matches. While well, playing the Black Prince. I mean, I had a Tier 8 game and a Tier 9 game. And I've had two Tier 7 games. Um, and they have tended, with the exception of the Malinovka game, to have been city fights, where this tank really, really can do well. Or at least not do terribly badly. So, I would be very, very surprised if I don't do well in this game. And again, remember, this thing has a listed traverse of 20 degrees, but we'll watch the way it turns. There is no way it only... this is... it's just not possible. This thing turns faster than 20 degrees. Or it certainly feels like it does. So no shortage of targets on this side. I was right to go this way. Boys over here for me to shoot at. Let's remove his cover. And he's getting close. And he returns fire. Oh no, it's that Black Prince up in front. He just damaged my tracks. Alright. 260 meter gunfire between two Black Princes. Both shooting at the front. Should be interesting. some wall between us and those guys on the flank and oh actually 122 now remember the problems that black prince in my mark 7 review had dealing with an su 122 from the front all you have to do is aim for his lower glacis and i angle a little his first shot bounces so i just angle a little more blows my tracks off that's fine I wasn't planning on moving anyway I'm nicely angled here. Come on. There we go. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Good stuff. Here's that Black Prince again. Oh, and we finally take some damage. Injures my driver. <laughs> can't, I can't have an injured driver in this tank. And there's that Chaffee putting shots into his side. And then he dies before we can... Before the oh, hello. 3-6 or 1-H. Okay. Turn, 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 get the frontal armor pointing on. Oh, blows my tracks off. Again, no problem there. Another Black Prince. So there's two of them now. Okay. I'm going to take a shot on the side here. Oh, I don't. It bounces off my turret. Hey, hey. 
And now I've got this Black Prince exactly where I want him. Set him on fire. He's dead. Where's that 3 6 of one edge? Chaffee finishes him off. Good. Oh no, it was the Panzer. Uh, the Panther M10 did it. Okay. And now there's only two of them left. And we only have one kill, but we've done some damage. And watch this. Watch this Chaffee. Yeah, that was accidental. But, you know, I finally have a good game, and there's always some twat. Well, you put a shot into me, mate, I'm going to put a shot into you. And you will definitely get tired of it before I do. And I'm not going after that Chaffee. I'm going after these guys over here. But if that Chaffee, if I get a chance to take a shot at that Chaffee, that little dick is going to find out what happens if you put shots into me. Look at that, straight into my weakest armor. Yeah, you'll get sorry with that. You will definitely get, and he does it again. Little prick. Well, finally got a good game in the Black Prince. Um, or more accurately, since Tier 6, we finally got a good game in a British heavy tank. Uh, but before we analyse the battle results in greater detail, um, if you have a look down here, you'll see, oh, yeah, come out of the game, and there's a message waiting for me. Um, guys, and this applies on the live server as well, uh, I'm sincerely not trying to be rude, but if you do send me a PM uh, and I don't reply to it, it's probably because I'm trying to do what I'm doing right now, look at an after battle results screen, or I'm in a game. And it usually takes me seven or eight tries, and anything up to an hour, uh, to get what I want to say right. So if I end up not returning your messages, it's because Wargaming still haven't put the do not disturb mode into the game that I want them to, and because it can take me anything up to an hour to get one of these videos right. And if I'm replying to your PMs, time is ticking, I have to get one of these videos up by midnight every day, I don't have time. Uh, so I'm sorry about that, um, I'm not ignoring everybody on purpose, well actually I am ignoring you all on purpose, but I'm ignoring you because I, I need to get these videos done, uh, and I can't be stopping and replying to PMs, and, and, and you know, it's, people just want to say, hello, I enjoy your videos, and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that, and I do appreciate it, but this is my job <laughs> and I need to get on with it speaking of getting on with it I'm sorry Gorf one two three four five six whatever your name is um, yeah I, I'm, I'm busy uh, I, I can't respond to your PM anyway there you go you're famous you're on YouTube uh, say hello to YouTube anyway so battle results well I did say I'll keep going until I finally got a good game in the Black Prince and I finally got a good game in the Black Prince but there's always some little prick who has to go and try and spoil it for you and there he is that little twat in the chaffy and I just don't get this I just don't get it at all um, despite wow look at that 21 shots fired nine hits in a chaffy with that with that gun I finally found some, guys I finally found somebody who is a worse shot than I have <laughs> But, you know, despite that, he had a good game. Look at the XP he got. That's not bad. Um, <laughs> you know, he did 900 damage with a gun that only does like 150 per shot. Um, he damaged two enemies. He killed one. He was having a good game. And then right at the end, he just starts taking pot shots at me. I mean, and it was quite deliberate. It wasn't accidental. Just a little prick who's not happy unless he's ruining somebody's game. But, you know, he puts a shot into me. I'll put a shot into him, and I guarantee he will be, he will get tired of it before I will, because I have 1450 health, and my gun fires almost as fast as his does. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't normally return fire at team killers. I just report them, move on to the next game. But I'd had such an awful day, uh, game after game in the Churchill Mark Seven, and was just horrible game after horrible game. Even the games where we were top tier in the Churchill Box 7 weren't very good. And then another streak of just god-awful teams and terrible games in the Black Prince. And then I finally, and it's not just my first good game in the Black Prince, it's my first good game today. And right at the end, some little prick has to go and try to spoil it. And yeah, sorry, on this occasion, if you shoot at me, I'm going to shoot at you. And no, I'm not sorry either. Anyway, 
Moving on, how did we go? Well, uh, not too bad actually. 23 shots fired, 18 hits, 14 penetrated, doing just short 2,000 damage. And we took 11 hits and got a very well deserved steel wall. But it's not difficult to get a steel wall in this tank when you're top tier, because the armour is, is good. Um, XP, well, uh, yeah, we, okay, we got fined 60 XP for shooting that little wanker, uh, which I'm not sorry about. And yeah, that's that's not bad at all. Pretty damn good. Didn't get the most XP though. Check out this KV2. Look at that. Tier 6 heavy tank in a tier 7 game. Um, <laughs> I needed 2,400 damage with 4 shots. <laughs> Nerf the KV2. <laughs> no, well played. Uh, yeah, it's nice to see somebody having a good game on the test server. Um, so, yeah. Finally got a good game in the Black Prince. Uh, well, just finally got a good game in the World of Tanks test server, playing the British Heavy Tanks. I sincerely hope the Carnarvon and the Conqueror and the FE215B are better than the Churchill, the Churchill Mark 7 and the Black Prince. So it's uh, conclusion time. What do I think of the Black Prince? Well, um, I don't hate it. And I'm quite surprised to hear myself say that, because if you look at the stats of the Black Prince, compare it to the stats of the Churchill Mark 7, the Churchill Mark 7 appears to be the better tank in its tier. They both have, I mean, we'll forgive the 25mm of rear hull armour, which is half the rear hull armour of the Churchill Mark 7. In all other respects, they have identical armour, but one's tier 6 and one's tier 7. So the Churchill Mark 7 is, at the worst, having tier 8 tanks shooting back at it, and it's got 152mm of frontal armour. The Black Prince is a tier 7 heavy tank, and it's going to have E75s and IS-8s and AMX 5120s shooting at it. And it's got the same armour. So, in theory, it's not as well armoured in its tier as the Churchill Mark 7. So, that's a strike against it. It's also just as slow as the Churchill Mark 7. So, that's another strike against it. Um, the gun isn't that much better than the gun the Churchill Mark 7 has. And I thought let's compare them directly. There you go. There's the 17-pounder. And there's the Churchill's 77mm. Um, they're both the same calibre. The Churchill even has a better rate of fire. The Black Prince has better penetration. Uh, in fact, there's nothing wrong with the Black Prince's penetration. There's, that's in the ballpark of Tier 7 heavy tank gun penetration, no problem. So it's got better penetration. They do effectively the same damage. I, I mean, 150 versus 140. They do the same damage. And this is a tier higher. It's slightly more accurate, it's got the same aiming time. The guns are no different. Only the Black Prince is a tier higher. So, on paper, I should prefer the Mark 7 Churchill to the Black Prince. Because in its tier, there's, there's no real question about it, it is a better tank at tier 6 than the Black Prince is at tier 7. And yet, I never, at any time, had any fun whatsoever. Even on the games where I was top tier, even on the games where I did well and got kills, wasn't having fun driving the Mark 7. I've had fun driving the Black Prince. I've just had better games. Um, I certainly haven't had better teams. My teams have been utterly abysmal. And yet... And I cannot explain it. I do not know why. I've just handled the tank better, or found the tank easier to handle than the Mark 7 Churchill. And I don't know why. Um, I have not hated driving the Black Prince. I detested every second I was driving the Mark 7 Churchill. I just hate that tank. Um, I, would, I would rather be driving an ARL 44 than the Mark 7 Churchill. What would I rather be driving than the Black Prince at Tier 7? Well, hmm, yeah, so what are our choices? We've got the uh, AMX M4 45 no, no, I wouldn't rather be in one of those. Uh, the Tiger, no, 
Not particularly. The Tiger P? Yeah, the Tiger P's a better tank. Um, if you gave me a choice between a Tiger P and a Black Prince, I'd choose the Tiger P. Uh, what have the Russians got? The IS? No. KV-3? Maybe. But, no, I'd be happy. I'd be happy to stick with the Black Prince. Despite the gun's shortcomings, um, I don't think it's a bad tank. It's not a great tank, <laughs> not by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> really, really isn't. Uh, uh, and you, you, you're going to be frustrated when you're driving it, uh, purely because of the pitiful damage output of the gun. And that seems to be the British tank thing. Um, it's these big lumbering heavy tanks with shitty little medium tank guns. Um, that would be fantastically good guns if they were on medium tanks, but they're not. <laughs> They're on great big lumbering slow heavy tanks. Certainly at tier uh, 5, 6 and 7, that is the case. One thing I will say about the Black Prince though. Um, the 20 degree per second traverse speed. I don't believe that. I do not believe that for a second. I think that is a typo. Um, this thing, there is no way this tank only turns at 20 degrees per second just feels like it turns much much faster than that. In fact um, I actually I'm recording this end of the video before I record the intro of the video you know the part where I say hi folks welcome back to blah 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 and so on and so on. Um, and so I hadn't actually looked at the stats of the tank and I can clearly remember at several points throughout most of the replays that you've seen so far thinking wow you know, uh, all right, yeah, it is a slow tank. It still only does 20 kilometers per hour, just like the Mark 7 Churchill, but at least it turns faster because I was very impressed with how quickly it turned. And I don't have clutch braking on the driver or anything, just repairs. And so I had a big shock um, just now coming out of the battle results screen and, and catching sight of that stat, 20 degrees traverse speed. No way. I, d I don't believe it. That is a work of fiction. This is a very maneuverable, slow, heavy tank. Um, and it's possibly why I had more fun in it than the Churchill 7. Because the Churchill just lurches around the place. It is a horrible tank to drive. The Black Prince is just as slow, but it's a lot more manoeuvrable. Strangely enough, I know that sounds weird. Um, it is a lot more manoeuvrable than this 20 degree traverse speed that it claims it has here would indicate. So, yeah, the Black Prince... I would recommend it, but I'll have to put a caveat on that recommendation. It is not as good in its tier as the Churchill Mark 7 is, and I utterly hated the Churchill Mark 7. And yet I have managed to have fun driving the Black Prince. You might, may, I've uh, forgotten how to speak English, you, you may also have fun driving the Churchill Black Prince, possibly for the same reasons I did. Uh, hell, you might have fun driving the Churchill Mark 7. People have fun driving the M3 Lee. You know, who am I to judge? Um, it's not a very, very good tank at all. It's not a great tank by any stretch of the imagination. But it's not terrible. And it does lead to some very good tanks. Uh, I've heard very, very good things about the Carnarvon and the Conqueror. And the FV215B is a, is a lot of fun to play. Um, so the British heavy tank line, uh, tier 5, Churchill Mark 1, it's okay, it's not bad. The Churchill Mark 7 at tier 6, it's bloody awful. <laughs> the Black Prince at tier 7 can be awful, uh, but also can be a lot of fun. It's a very sort of either or tank. Um, I've had fun driving it, I sincerely hope you do too. Um, but I would understand if you hated it, let me just put it that way. I've had fun driving it. I hope you do too. I completely understand, however, if you can't stand the thing. Because there are lots of things about it to not like. So, there you go. The Churchill Black Prince British Tier 7 Heavy Tank. Hope you enjoyed the replays. Um, apologies for my swearing. but I got very, very angry at several points throughout the making of this one. Um, I've had some very testing teams today. Um, I'll try to keep it under control for the Carnarvon review or possibly the Comet review, whichever one I do next. 
In the meantime, as always, take care on the battlefield and I'll catch you next time.